Buongiorno, ciao a tutti, give me a second, uh, having a bunch of problems with the gimbal. Yeah, definitely the weather is absolutely amazing compared to a few days ago. <laughs> ciao a tutti, a yeah, long time that we don't see each other. Yeah, I cannot even remember the last time that I was doing the tour, which is <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, getting older. Now the weather is just amazing, uh, and the entire ciao, ciao, Linda, ciao, Manga, ciao, Nina, ciao a tutti. Now the weather is just amazing compared to a few days ago that uh, the entire idea was just totally crazy and so mm, we were expecting to have uh, approximately two meters high of um, water high water and so two meters above the sea level and so the situation it was pretty bad definitely and um, ciao a tutti and so the situation was pretty bad and uh, thanks God that uh, uh, they lift up the Moses project and at that point uh, the Moses dam and uh, is safe Venice and so we were pretty dry two days ago even if the wind was something like 70 kilometers per hour and so as I told you we were expecting to have something like two meters of high tide above the sea level the last one that we had in 2019 it was 1 meter 87 and so two meters it would have been a massive disaster and um, right now the situation is uh, good because the, um, the dam was up and so it definitely saved us uh, Venice again so at the moment the water is slowly going down again so let me show you how everything is yeah the weather is just outstanding it's just marvelous today it's just so beautiful and we are so good. So those billions of dollars came in handling. Yeah, I would definitely say so. At the end, uh, it's time to build an ark. <laughs> it was time already a while ago to build up an ark. And so Moses, we got it. And then we got the ark and that it will be great. Yeah, ciao to all of you on behalf of uh, I love you Venice, welcome to our channel, welcome, welcome to Venice and uh, as some of you can easily recognize that we are right by the area of the train station, we are right in front of the church of San Simon, San Simeon, we are right, um... <laughs> yeah we go this in his pocket just in case yeah well I got no it was yesterday and the day before that I was having wellingtons in my backpack just in case that I wasn't that trustful but everything went pretty well but you can uh, we are pretty lucky because as you can clearly see the weather is just amazing yeah look I got an incredible blue sky and uh, the view is just uh, unreal as you can tell um, Venice uh, it's a uh, kind of quiet uh, the busiest area at the moment uh, is uh, the area of the Biennale especially the area uh, of the Giardini and uh, close by St. Mark because everybody is trying to go to see the Biennale that if I remember right uh, is closing down on the 27th of November so everybody is uh, in a kind of a rush uh, to go to see uh, to, to, to go to see the, the, um, the Biennale itself sort of uh, off season till closer to Christmas bravissima that's totally right and so as far as I can see it's gonna be a kind of quiet uh, pretty much until the 20th of December and then it's going to be totally crazy busy until the first or the second week of January and then we should be quiet until middle of February that we got Carnival that we got Carnival 
and then uh, I believe that uh, Carnival this year is uh, middle of February and then by that time everything is going to change again and so I believe that the season is going to start uh, around April May as usual just to give you a full 360 degrees view of this area is not really well we got anything between 40 50 60 centimeters uh, up in the Dolomites that they are only one hour one hour and a half away from here so uh, we are pretty much ready to open up the skiing season by the end of November beginning of December and so today we're going to take um, I'm going to take you into a really interesting uh, part of the city actually it's gonna be like Harry Potter in a way that we're going to see if the um, Harry Potter's truck uh, it, it will be available and uh, ciao ciao Igor buongiorno and at that point uh, we're going to go out of the train station and we're going to adventure ourselves in a really remote area that is uh, all beautiful and uh, it's gonna be a kind of brand new and uh, we're going to see Igor talking to Igor, yeah, <laughs> that is a normal thing to me that I'm always talking to myself. Uh, <laughs> that's a different story. Uh, no, the, the, the other thing is uh, we're going to go to the northern part of Venice, we're going to stick with the area of Canareggio, we're going to see a new bridge that is on the back alleys, we're going to see the new university area and uh, uh, an area that we never touched. We almost cover up everything in Venice and we are definitely starting our tour directly from the area of the train station. So just remember that uh, if you are coming with the train, this is pretty much the scenario that you will be getting. And uh, uh, once that you are coming into Venice itself, remember that we got the Church of the Scalzi, the Friars Barefoot. And uh, um, literally behind the church exactly where the little tree is sticking out that's more or less where we got one of the most incredible gardens that is totally hideaway and uh, uh, if you are going to be in venice uh, during uh, harvesting time uh, right there it will be open you can go to visit the friars and uh, that they do the aqua di melissa and uh, they do some perfumes uh, they sell some spices and some specific cosmetic things and uh, the vineyard over there is going to be just outstanding so we're slowly starting our tour directly from the train station and so these train stations that we are facing right now it's a kind of new because it has been built it up during Mussolini time but the first stations that has been developed in this area it has been developed during the Austro-Hungarian Empire and how better the Austro-Hungarian uh, Empire and uh, the time when Franz Josef Sisi Maximilian they were here they decided to build up uh, a uh, um, train station exactly here. Let's say that uh, um, it was uh, around the middle of the 1800 uh, that they pretty much tear down this church that it would have been exactly here and from this point on actually they made space and uh, they built it up the church that it was uh, um, actually the train station that the first train station it would have been right up here by the waterfront but um, what was happening in those days? We would have had a row of buildings that it was going all the way from the pinkish building that we just saw it all the way down to the church. And so when the Austro-Hungarian Empire got here, they tear down all the palaces, including the church of Saint Lucy, Santa Lucia. That's the reason why that the train station is named after Saint Lucy and they definitely built it up the entire train station uh, the first one it was totally different it was way much closer to the water and uh, the train station that you see right now the modern one he has been built it up during the time of Benito Mussolini so every time that you're going to see something extremely plain uh, extremely flat and extremely ugly that's pretty much uh, uh, being developed by Mussolini itself. 
And so here we go. Let's slowly start to adventure ourselves in the train station. And so today, as I told you, I'm going to take you in a, a funny area that is going to be a bit uncommon and uh, not many people knows of this kind of uh, shortcut or special gateway. Oh, look at here. This is the kind of view that you are normally getting once that you are arriving here in Venice. And so this is the first beautiful view that you are getting in the city. Or think about that Professor Langdom, uh, if we are talking about uh, Inferno, uh, when he was traveling from Florence uh, all the way up to Venice with the super fast train, uh, he got off right here. They just uh, took the water taxi somewhere over there and then they started to speed up into Piazza San Marco. Um, right here, a um, few months ago, in the train stations, uh, they were shooting um, uh, Books Club number two. So Diane, Keaton and many others, they were right here in the train station hanging around. Uh, here in the Venice train station, they were shooting um, what the movie The Tourist. And so Johnny Depp and Angelina Jolie, that they were on board of the trains, uh, they were coming from Paris. They got off right here and then uh, they crossed the square exactly like Professor Langdon. They took a water taxi and they ended up into the area of Piazza San Marco, especially in the Daniele Hotel or movie trivia, see, <laughs> it's pretty much so. Or otherwise, uh, Clint Eastwood, a few years ago, he was shooting, uh, he was doing the movie Attack to the Train. Um, and that was the terrorist uh, attack uh, that he was uh, going on between uh, the area of Brussels and Paris. And uh, the American soldiers before uh, they were on holiday in Venice. And so Clint Eastwood, he was shooting part of the movie right here in the train station. <laughs> Here we go, that's uh, our train station and I'm going to take you into a new port that uh, is normally, it was normally open up to the students of the train school of the, for, for, for the Venetians actually. And so you was learning how to ride a um, train right in the area that I'm going to take you down in a couple of minutes. But the other idea is what's the temperature here today? And so at this real moment we got something like 12, uh, 13 degrees. Uh, that it means uh, Celsius. That in Fahrenheit uh, is around 52, 53, 54. It's really pleasant. It's really nice, uh, and we cannot complain at all. And so it's really, really beautiful. Let's see how lucky we're going to be. And uh, if it's going to be a kind of uh, mm, no misty, we should be able to see all the snow that we had up in the mountains. Um, because uh, Saturday, Sunday and Monday, it was snowing like crazy up in the Dolomites that are only one hour and a half away from here. And I hope that we're going to have the same snow in 2026 when the Winter Olympic Games they are going to take place. Yeah, as you can see, it seems to be Harry Potter at the moment. Uh, we need to find the truck. <laughs> at the moment we are truck number one. Yeah, we, 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 knew, we, we need to do, we must do a new episode. So Harry Potter in Venice or anything similar. <laughs> and that it will be really interesting. Yeah, it, it seems that we're going to have a kind of sunburn, and so that's pretty much the idea. Don't run against the wall. No, to, no I, try, I try not to. Let's see if I can go through. Yeah. Whoop, no. No, it's not working. And so only Harry Potter had this special power. And so, look, if you're going to be in the Venice train station and you need to kill a little bit of time, in my opinion, coming this way is going to be really interesting because <laughs> literally out of the way 
uh, and two seconds uh, out of this area it's gonna be really interesting look at here and so this is one of the first canals that we're starting to find out and uh, look how beautiful this area is starting to be <laughs> I was cosplaying Harry Potter last carnival and so we were the Harry Potter family <laughs> look the situation and so the the, the houses that we just saw it uh, uh, they are pretty much social houses that uh, has been developed uh, during the 60s and 70s and they used to be the houses uh, of um, the guy that uh, were the guys uh, the workers that uh, were in charge of uh, the trains of uh, taking care of uh, the maintenance driving the trains and everything else and there's a new project that is starting to be on and it's not clear they didn't tell much but look at here this entire area it's a beautiful garden this one it used to be the botanical garden of venice and so believe it or not venice would have had a botanical garden one of the most incredible botanical gardens that we got in this area in italy is padova it is the largest and the oldest we got even the palm that it would have belongs to uh, goethe that uh, is right by the padua uh, botanical garden and that one is phenomenal they just finished a big massive restoration it's totally brand new and so it's gonna worth a visit if you're going to be in Padua to see the botanical garden but here we go this is our little Venice botanical garden unfortunately it's not in use anymore but uh, the entire idea is that they are going to do something we didn't understand that if it's going to be a garden if it's going to be another hotel or whatever else because we got this entire built yeah the, the the venue the location is just phenomenal it's really nice and uh, uh, let me see if i can zoom a bit here we go so we got the church of the scalzi the friars barefoot where you got the big pine tree over there that's exactly where the vineyard hills and uh, let me see we zoom it back and we are totally behind uh, normally this area you don't get to see much uh, as you probably figured out we got a lot of uh, kids uh, teenagers uh, that they are walking this way and they are all the students that they are going uh, to walk towards the university that uh, this area is uh, the department of uh, economy and uh, uh, a lot of people they're always asking uh, um, if we got a campus here in venice actually we don't have a campus itself venice is the campus here we go the train tracks <laughs> we are by the track number one n which is a new one that they are using and uh, we are almost in the bridge of liberty ponte della libertà <laughs> so at this moment uh, in a second i will show you exactly where we are where we are coming out and uh, in this is the entire area that it belongs to uh, the railway station actually this is the area where we got all the schools as i told you where you do the exam where you learn how to take care of the train business and all these things and so a business school for trains and uh, here we go the entire situation is changing again this is normally what you normally see how you see venice but this part is gonna be completely new i show you a bar that in my opinion is really worth that you will be facing the sea and so you will be in a really oh look look how pretty these little alleys are and so Calle della Ceria and so the uh, the street of the wax the street where they would have produced the wax candles and uh, of course we got our laundry that is always hanging out of the balcony and uh, that is pretty much the main element that everybody 
it tends to be addicted <laughs> on the last few years to take pictures of. The other idea is, look, um, the embankment here is totally brand new. In the past, we would have had water all the way up there. Uh, some of the buildings here, they belong to the university, some are apartments. We do have quite a lot of student apartments at this area. Uh, first time in almost a week they could put out laundry. <laughs> See, we're pretty much right, actually. We didn't have much chances uh, to put uh, the laundry out uh, because the weather has been really bad. I mean, a few days ago it was just dreadful and it was cold freezing and it wasn't nice look where we are le mutantine veneziane si esatto <laughs> oh here we go but we can clearly see the ponte della libertà and so since that we were discussing about movie trivia under this part of the bridge actually they were shooting uh, the boat chase of uh, Italian Job, the remake. That's exactly how everything, where everything was happening, actually. Here we go. That we got our trains that are coming in. So basically, the Austro-Hungarian Empire built it up this side of the uh, bridge for the trains, for the train tracks. The side, the left side, where the mm, cars are, that one it has been built it up by Benito Mussolini. And look, these little islands that they are standing here and there, uh, the majority they might have an octagon shape, but especially before that the bridge has been built it up, around this area we would have had uh, um, an island that there was a person that he was hanged there and it was like a deterrent. All the boats, all the vessels that they were going from the mainland, the mainland is the skyline that you see over there um, while that they were coming in and going into where Piazzale Roma is where the train station nowadays is it was like a warning it was like folks okay you're coming into Venice here justice is working extremely well but behave and so if you're going to do anything wrong we're going to hang you and so that was the real meaning and then as long that you was getting into Piazzale Roma you would have had El Ponte degli Squartai the bridge of the people that has been drawn in quarters see, see again those creepy stories sorry <laughs> you know that I like it and uh, here we go that we got uh, this bridge is uh, fairly new Ponte Valeria Solesin if some of you remember that we were having the terrorist down into uh, Paris a Venetian girl died and I decided to build up this bridge yeah we must get into blood and the funny stupid stories otherwise I'm not happy and uh, at the moment uh, I'm reading a book, a book about uh, Venice, uh, of course, uh, but about alchemists uh, that they were living and working here. And uh, in the meanwhile, I'm reading a book uh, about the Piave River, because I'm thinking about walking from the Dolomites to Venice. Uh, that is going to be a walk that is going to last probably 10 days to show off uh, the connections uh, between the Piave going to Venice to show off exactly where all the uh, wooden pilings, the trunks they come from and the, uh, the entire track that the ancestor of the Venetians they done from mountains directly into the lagoon. Here we go. As you can see, it's a totally brand new uh, bridge. Nothing to do with the bridges that we normally know. Probably he's got a kind of a flavor of Calatravas, but nothing uh, like uh, the other 400 bridges here we go you can clearly see that we're having this beautiful weather it's gonna be a kind not, not really a pilgrimage that's another project <laughs> but that is gonna be uh, really interesting yeah look at the beauty of the colors of the lagoon today and so that that's the bar that i was talking about and so if you're coming this way it's going to be the area of the students so you can just uh, sit down this area just enjoy the beautiful 
sunset and the trains that they are passing by if you are trains addicted this might be an option but uh, this section at least is going to be quite lovely relaxing and you won't be stuck with a lot of tourists so you got a lot of uh, you got plenty of space plenty of tables and it's a quite nice bar actually and yeah look if you're coming this side for the sunset <laughs> train spotting <laughs> if you're coming this side for the sunset it's a great idea too and so let me see if i can show you a little bit of the dolomites at this point oh here we go let me try to zoom see the quarter the district is really nice i will show you more in a second but the entire idea is uh, um, if you think about uh, the entire district uh, in berlin if you think about uh, the entire area uh, close by postammer platz uh, the sony center and those areas uh, that is pretty much uh, how this area look like if you want Yeah, you can clearly, uh, I mean, the weather is not perfect, 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 but those peaks right there, sorry for my big finger, those are the Dolomites, the Dolomiti. And let me see. Unfortunately, if it would have been super clean and clear, um, we would have been able to see... Um, the entire area of uh, the Dolomites uh, and the Alps uh, close by how <laughs> exactly my folk that used to live there <laughs> here we go and so you, you, you we got the same feeling and so Renzo Piano buildings uh, and those kind of red bricks building uh, that's exactly the idea uh, the entire idea is that those um, Dolomites those mountains that they are right there are the one uh, close by uh, let's say Austrian border close by Slovenia Croatia and uh, when it's clean and clear as few days ago the view was just phenomenal yeah uh, here we go that's so uh, you you can see this entire that is totally brand new so if you're coming this way in my opinion is right a, a nice way to enjoy this area and so as i told you you are going to find uh, have several students uh, but no tourists uh, and the view as i told you is not bad i mean if you are sitting this side of course you got uh, the sunset and you do have uh, the train but this side you got uh, uh, it might be a little bit busy because uh, you got quite a lot of boats that they are coming and going because it's definitely the day uh, the, the end of the day and uh, they are all going back to the base to drop off the boats after the delivery lovely emerging from the mist see i just love this area great view i <laughs> got good linda uh, it's, let's say it's new uh, let, let's go a little bit further let's see how far that i can go because i know that they were doing a bunch uh, or construction works at this real moment they are doing several reconstruction work delivery boats day days and see 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 it's definitely the, the, the almost the end of the day and uh, this man has me boats uh, is like ikea to give you an idea and they are normally doing uh, furniture delivery hardware delivery and so refrigerators ovens all these things but I would definitely say that it's a quite lovely area and uh, it's worth uh, a little stroll around this part. At least uh, you are super quiet and uh, you can really enjoy the view, especially of the northern part of the lagoon. And so, uh, yeah, um, let's say the temperature dropped quite a lot, uh, especially in the early hours. This morning was freezing. <laughs> and uh, uh, that, that goes to the heavy snow that we were having 
uh, let's say we ended up having in the Monte Grappa something like 20, 30, 40 centimeters, almost a meter down into Cortina d'Ampezzo. And for those of you that they are interested to come into Cortina, I mean into Italy in 2026, remember that during winter time you do have all the um, winter, winter Olympic Games that are going to be held between Milano, Milan, and uh, um, uh, and Ven Venezia, um, Cortina d'Ampezzo, and so the Dolomites. And so, if you don't want to have any kind of crowds, uh, remember to avoid the Dolomites in that kind of time because there's only one road going up to the Dolomites and you might get stuck. And um, but if you are a fan of uh, Winter Olympic Games, that it will be a really interesting way to see Italy from a different point of view. Um, let me see if I can zoom a little bit. Oop. Yeah, the wooden pilings that are sticking out in the middle of the lagoon. This is pretty much the main street. Here we go. That we got the airplane that is landing. Now I show you exactly where the airport is for those of you that have never been here. And uh, yeah, those wooden pilings, they are mainly the, the, the main street of Venice. So normally you sail right in between those poles. But so in this way, you know that the canal is deep enough and you won't get stuck. There we go. Look that the airplane it almost landed. Ciao, Marek. I'm really happy to that the, the, the Moses saved Venice. Otherwise, it would have been a big, massive problem. Here we go. The, those that big tower that's exactly the airport and going from Venice airport to Venice itself is a, a, a 30 minutes ride a boat ride you can even reach Venice via car for those of you that never been to Venice uh, let me show you everything is working all that green uh, that is in front of us that is considered main land and so that's the land and Venice is connected to uh, the mainland via the bridge that is on our left hand side otherwise actually you can drive into Venice and get into Piazzale Roma or otherwise uh, you can get a water taxi and get into Venice itself uh, oh let me see we might have some cormorants that they're flying around See, they are cormorants. Here they are. Let me give you a full 360 degrees view. Yeah, let's say sitting here and joining this area, I believe that is definitely a nice idea, a nice way. Ducks all gone. Um, <laughs> yes and no. We got a lovely community of ducks that is stuck in Piazzale Roma. There are something like 20, 25. Uh, some of those ducks that we saw it in the previous uh, mm, tours, in the previous uh, videos, actually. And it seems that they are not going away, those ones. And so they supposed to migrate already, but the only a, a lot of them, they are here. It was oh give me a second a week ago yeah a week ago i was in leo piccolo leo piccolo l-i-o space p-i-c-c-o-l-l-o -L -L and so sorry only one l uh, and that area is close by yesolo which is the beach is the seaside resort and it was full of flamingos, it was full of uh, um, branzini, and so it was full of fish actually, and that was spectacular. Here we go, we're still by the area of the university, but as you can clearly see, I know that Padua, they got this kind of crest in the... Palazzo del Bo, but definitely that is a bull's head. So we got more bull's heads right there. We got several in a row. 
And so at this real moment, it's the university, but in the past, this one, it would have been the slaughterhouse. That is exactly where we were slaughtering a whole uh, the cows and different kinds of animals, actually. Right now, we are slaughtering students. Because is there any kind of Guardia di Marina in Venezia? I forgot the name, but similar idea. So, a uh, uh, coat in the third store with this label and got curious. And so, see, we do have the... Um, uh, basically, the... the, the, the policemen and the, 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 of the lagoon literally and they are taking care of uh, traffic they are taking care of uh, uh, the problems with the environment they are taking care of uh, different kinds of boats that they are sailing and all these kind of things looks like something they would have here in texas bull's head see 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 you're right no no we got uh, the 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 the, the, the <laughs> the policemen of the lagoon that they are taking care of many different aspects uh, including even the Moses project including even the dam yeah look how beautiful the colors are and uh, uh, let me see if I can zoom again into the dolomites but you can uh, unfortunately the weather is a uh, kind of funny but it would have I mean the, the view it would have been uh, amazing well we got a little boat that uh, we got a tugboat it looked like an offshore boat <laughs> yeah we got just a shadow of the mountains uh, i mean uh, in the reality we see it way much better but it's it's not too bad actually Oh, let's load it. Here we go. We got water. Uh, look at the reflections that we got of the building into uh, the ponds. No, there's something wrong. <laughs> no, it's bubbling a little bit too well. <laughs> something broke down. Um, yeah, it, it's not high tide. One of the pipes is gone. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, sorry, not this. Not in 8K this time. Uh, I'm working on it. Uh, I just wrote to, to Father Christmas uh, to Santa Claus if he's going to bring me uh, a new phone uh, <laughs> with 24K that at least we can see what they are doing up in the Dolomites. <laughs> yeah, the the view is just terrific. Yeah, some of the water, the ponds. No, no, is the entire pipe is broke. It's definitely he broke down. Mm. Ah yeah, ah yeah. I thought that there were the um, waves uh, of this morning that they were pretty bad. We had a bunch of uh, problems here and there this morning with uh, the wind that it was blowing a little bit uh, too fast. Yeah, I need to ask when the uh, at the end uh, of uh, uh, the festivities that is bringing the calza the calza is literally a sock uh, uh, socks that they are filled up with uh, um, chestnuts uh, mandarins uh, or otherwise uh, you got sweets uh, you got uh, the uh, pieces of choco wood so if you've been bad and this kind of things oh here we go look at the view that we got exactly here which is pretty nice. Let me see if I can give you the full idea. Uh, to me, the, 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 the Befana is going to give me the call. I definitely agree with you. I've been pretty bad the entire season. And so I'm going to have tons of call. Which is not bad, actually, that in this way I can heat up my place. <laughs> no complaints. Uh, we are right in the Baia del Re, slowly, and this is the other classical spots. Uh, 
that uh, all the locals they are normally sitting and uh, using to enjoy the view of the sunset we're going to use that one too in a little second but this uh, that guy is holding up building <laughs> he can be um, the entire idea is uh, that uh, the building the pinkish building on the left hand side they are all a kind of social houses and the people that they were not doing too well economically speaking they has been helped out by the government in this area and so normally if you cannot really afford to have uh, um, to pay off the the, the, the rent uh, in venice uh, in italy is working the same way the government is going to help you out and the rent around this area for a small apartment if you cannot do it economically speaking is going to be more like 300 euros a month or anything similar here we go that we are slowly getting in, in the main entrance of the slaughter house and uh, sorry that everything is moving i cannot see much today that uh, the reflection of the sun is definitely too strong and uh, oh, here we got the cormoran that is right there fishing oh it just jumped now this canal is the canal that is linking of course uh, the lagoon the outside of the lagoon with uh, the jewish ghetto the jewish quarter so it means that if you go all the way down until the end you got ponte de leguglie that is the the bridge with the spikes and if you stick with the left you got the main entrance of the jewish district the jewish quarter so right now we're going to slowly start to, to see the bridge uh, with the free arches so it's a kind of a special bridge uh, one of a kind is the only one that we got in town and the entire idea was uh, to have free arches to have the big galleys uh, passing right in the middle and the small boats uh, right on the side probably it never worked it out too well but uh, they gave up uh, the, en the entire other project uh, that's what was going on look at here oh, second. Calle delle Beccarie Becker in the Venetian thing is butcher it makes sense and so we got the slaughter house and you're going to have the butcheries that they're going to go just beside and that this entire section where we are right now is pretty much the area where we're normally um putting water we're having all the delivery boats uh, where that's where we dock all the dhl boats uh, the ups boats uh, and so early hours this area is totally crazy busy and so look how pretty this house is so they renovated the entire facade really recently and uh, the red one is just terrific they are still having petunias which is really late for the season but the petunias they are just fantastic they are really 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 nice actually Let me take you a little bit closer to the Ponte dei Tre Archi. Yeah, of course, around this area, everything is named Tre Archi. Hotel Tre Archi, for instance. Then I show you another spot that if you're coming this way, look at these amazing pasta reflections in the water. Yeah, the, the, the reflections today, they are just unreal. The, 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 the color of the sky and everything is stunning and so we're really lucky it's just chilly i mean as long that you are in the sun it's great it's really good once that you are moving out uh, and you are in the shade it's not that nice calle del magazine and so it's basically the street uh, of the storage room and so being by as i told you the the, the, the this area we got a lot of uh, special spots uh, where you would uh, store or done some specific jobs beautiful lights and reflections with the low sun today see i definitely agree uh, so we are really really lucky and uh, now we are going to try 
to, to go on the other side. The other thing that is great is this restaurant, Trattoria da Marisa. Family-run restaurant, excellent food, and uh, you don't spend much, uh, you don't have much choice of uh, mm, on the menu. <laughs> you, you, you get what she cooked that specific day, but that is terrific. That one is really, really, really nice, actually. Oh, let's go up the bridge. Look, we were, this is the first canal that we saw it today. So all the way down until the end of this canal, we got a truck number one. So we got the train station. Even this view is not bad. Let me see if we can adjust. No, no, too bright, too bright. Yeah, you can clearly see right now what I was talking about. That the bridge is divided is in three arches. Ciao Ricky, ciao Los Angeles. <laughs> ciao a tutti. Yeah, as you can see, that's exactly how the bridge of the three arches look like. So let's have a look on the top of the bridge because the view is going to be sensational in a second. So as I told you, this is pretty much the canal that is linking the lagoon with uh, the Jewish quarter, the Jewish district. So at the moment we're next door to the church of San Job. Here we go. Look at this view. Look how cool everything is. So the big massive palace on the left hand side, that's pretty much where the French embassy would have been and Jean-Jacques Rousseau from the French Revolution he would have lived. And look how crooked the entire is look right there is all funny and super crooked all the floors uh, that would have been built it up in wooden beams uh, planks uh, powder from uh, the bricks and then they would have uh, uh, filled it up everything with uh, um, marble chips uh, or anything similar and that one it was the terrazzo alla veneziana the venetian terrazzo so uh, it was a way to do recycling, but it was a way that uh, the floor wasn't cracking. If you're going to end up inside of the Doji's Palace, so you got floors that are something like 500 years old and they got no cracks. And that is phenomenal. Those big tall palaces right over there, that's the area where the Jewish district, the Jewish quarter is. And so that's where the ghetto uh, yes, so 500 years ago they converted the entire area from a foundry into ciao Ricky, grazie mille, in from a foundry into um, the, 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 the ghetto that everybody knows. And ghetto is not a bad meaning here, it mainly means uh, uh, district. Uh, uh, the ghetto used to be what the foundry itself, gettare means. Uh, the, the meaning is to melt, but in Italian, gettare is even to through. Oh, look at this view. Uh, it's just perfect. <laughs> yeah, it's phenomenal. Yeah, to, let's put a little bit of less of sky. I look like a picture at this point. Look, wow. Let me give you a slow view. so we can get a, a full 360 degrees view of this amazing area yeah the other thing is if you're coming to walk if you're going to come for an aperitif exactly right in this area it's a great idea actually you got a lot of lovely bars a lot of lovely restaurants that they are situated around this area they're really worth. Uh, of course, uh, during winter time you will be in the shade, but during summer time the entire embankment it will be in the sun, and it really worth uh, uh, sit right here. Sometimes, if you are into um, second-hand shop, into charity shops uh, or charity events, uh, the Church of San Job, normally in the courtyard in the park, uh, right over there. 
they um, they they display a little market uh, that is run by the locals to help out the, the local economy oh let's slowly go this way sorry that is gonna be a little bit bumpy love all the soft colors and view see see linda the soft colors they are amazing today we're really lucky with these colors but the view is unreal Oh, here we go. Let's get a little bit closer so we can see how the situation is. So we're slowly getting into the Baia de Re, and then we try to get lost into the inner streets. Whatever is horrible here, heavy rain and windy, so this is a perfect escape today. Yeah, but, um, I mean, if two days ago it would have been horrible, really, even here. I mean, the weather it was really, really, really bad. We were not even able to get on board of the Vaporetti on the water buses because the entire sea was too choppy, the wind was blowing like crazy, and we would have never been able to get on board of the boats. We, mm, we've been lucky enough that we didn't have any kind of... Uh, accident boat accident especially in this canal on our back uh, a boat of the ali laguna that is the line boat that is linking venice uh, uh, let's say to the train i'm sorry from venice airport to, to venice city center you, mo you almost would have hit uh, a local boat so the the wind was too 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 strong oh here we go got our little seagull friend but we've been really, really lucky. Everybody was extremely worried a few days ago. I mean, as, as we mentioned at the beginning, if they would have not activated the Moses Dam, that would have been a big, massive problem. Oh, here we go. Doesn't life stop here without boats? <laughs> yeah. Well, let's say not many people they were able to go out in that day and so the weather was just too bad it wasn't working uh, that properly to go out so i've been lucky enough that i wasn't working that specific day otherwise it would have been a real problem oh look let's have a look uh, from this point how everything looked like yeah, everybody has to walk, but if you live in the Giudecco, if you live in the Lido, <laughs> you are stuck. Or you cannot come to Venice, or you cannot go back to, to home. Oh, even going from the airport to Venice via boat, that would have been a little bit uh, too risky. It was too... It wasn't that great actually, it was too, 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 too choppy and uh, it wasn't safe at all. So uh, if you're going to watch a bunch of videos of Venice a few days ago, it was really, 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 really bad actually. I mean, let's have a look. It's something like uh, 10 past 4, 10 to 4. The colors, they should be the best one at this specific moment. From 4.15 all the way to oh, 4.45 it's gonna be still good still still nice and then by 5.15 5.30 it's going to turn to be kind of dark oh here we go Yeah, as you can clearly see, it's one of the most quiet areas uh, and you hardly have a lot of 
tourists around this area. I mean, this embankment uh, uh, close by the Jewish ghetto, we got a lot of um, bars and restaurants. The, 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 the other part actually not much, but if you want a quiet and relaxing seat and meditate and enjoy this view, this is going to be pretty good. ER, firefighter, policeman, see, si, see, si, Nina. Absolutely has been a nightmare for them because uh, they were having different kind of emergencies and uh, uh, riding a boat uh, during that with that kind of weather or rescue somebody that he was uh, in a danger that was that wasn't nice actually. There we go. That's so the finding five uh, different so let me show you this view that normally it's another popular one that everybody's taking the pictures so I believe that we cover up literally everything on the last few years with I love you Venice or at least we cover up a lot a lot of, of spots and even if we cover up a, a lot, uh, we're still finding out the little sections that we never hit. Let me try to go out uh, that I got a lack of uh, signal. Sorry if I'm not stopping much, but better to go out of this area that we got a little bit less cement oh here we go look look how lucky the people that live here which kind of view that they are having so the entire idea is uh, straight in front of us we got the airport uh, the island on the right hand side that is Murano that's where they do the glass blowing uh, and uh, where the crane is uh, that's pretty much uh, where uh, we got the area where they do all the replacement of the boats it's pretty much like the garage this area is quite popular even because we got the petrol station the gas station that's exactly where everybody is coming to refill it it's not the only one that we got here but we got many uh, petrol stations that they are spread out uh, all over the entire island they are normally situated outside of Venice they are not in the city center for safety reasons and all these things let me see if I can give you an idea of how this area look like as you can see the view is slightly different of what we are normally seeing in the other parts of Venice mainly because uh, all the buildings uh, they are new I don't know uh, about the the situation of uh, the Airbnb is around this area no idea if they got a lot if they got little no clue but I never it's all quiet here it's always this quiet but I never pick up anybody around this area actually if we, with Airbnbs or anything similar oh here we go our <laughs> popular picture with all the clothes that they're hanging oh let's slowly go Sotto portico delle case nove, under the arch of the new houses. <laughs> nice to see that we got all these little. Um, nice to see some benches along here. You can watch the boats, planes, wildlife, uh, and sunset the whole back by the Dolomite. See, si, see, si, you're right, it's one of the few areas that you got no tourists. You got. Uh, um, no um, 
uh, yeah, definitely no tourists, but it's one of the few areas that we got pages, <laughs> which is a kind of mission impossible to find pages every time that we are coming into Venice itself. I definitely agree with you. Uh, more benches, it would have been great. Uh, look, even sitting exactly here, uh, that you are right in the middle of the green during summertime, you got a lovely breeze that is blowing uh, directly from the mountains. You got the shade of the umbrella pine trees, and this is the view that you are normally having. So, phenomenal. So, we're kind of lucky. And so, if you are coming this way, it's going to be a kind of interesting. How much does it cost to leave there retiring soon? Uh, healing <laughs> probably is not the best spot to, to use as a retirement place. Venice is really expensive and uh, it can, buying something here it can be it's, uh, as expensive as it can be uh, New York, let's say, or anything similar. I mean, buying... Uh, an apartment here, it can be 600, 700, 1 million, 2 millions, a palace along the Grand Canal. It's going to be more like uh, uh, 40 million euros, so it can be really extremely expensive. But even logistically speaking, it's not that easy because we've got 120 islands, uh, we got 400 bridges, we got something like uh, 150 canals and crossing uh, so many bridges to go from place A to place B to do shopping that might be complicated actually. And so I'm getting older, it might be an issue, it might be a problem. So it's in some, somehow it might not be the ideal spot to be. <laughs> <laughs> to get retired here. <laughs> I hope for you that you're going to marry a not a millionaire, a multi-billionaire. <laughs> Ciao Mark, happy Thanksgiving from the US <laughs> getting in on your tour after making French toast for breakfast. <laughs> See ciao folks, a happy Thanksgiving to the American friend uh, that uh, you will be celebrating today and uh, Macy's uh, <laughs> parade and whatever else I already prepared yesterday night my uh, turkey stuff with uh, chestnuts uh, and so I will be celebrating Thanksgiving too which is something that is extremely uncommon for Italy the f uh, which is totally uncommon but uh, my my house were more Americans than Italians so that's how everything is working. Does Moses working or did you have still Aqua Alta these days? No, no, the, the, Mo, the Moses, yes, the, the day before yesterday and this morning was activated. I wasn't able to read what we're going to do tomorrow, but I believe that it might be activated too. And so we were all dry. Uh, let me see. Yeah, I'm, I'm really happy that you are enjoying uh, the tour. Big Thanksgiving holiday here. Yeah, I know, I know that you're having a lot of uh, fun. You will be having a lot of fun uh, really soon. And so your turkey is, it must be massive, I believe. My turkey, <laughs> it, it, it's tiny. I wasn't able to find much. Let's say that turkey here they are not exactly the same size as the American ones they are a little bit smaller ciao <laughs> Freddy and ciao Bonnie Scotland Shotland <laughs> that I got a bunch of friends of mine so that they live in Dundee <laughs> lucky you and uh, I'm tuning daily to live pizza <laughs> over Venice thank you thank you thank you to all of you Food, friend, food family, friends and football, <laughs> that is a great combination. Yeah, look at the colors that they are standing right in front of us. How many people in the streets? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, as far as I can see. <laughs> Not many. 
and uh, we were in Venice a couple of weeks ago, very beautiful and uh, historic. We went uh, by the ghetto sections to look around and so spend it, uh, 557, the Jewish ghetto is somewhere there, so we're not far. So we're getting to the Jewish ghetto from the back alleys, from the back streets. And so this canal is the parallel canal to the canal that we were walking along a few minutes ago where we saw the bridge with the three arches. And that this uh, section is really amazing, lovely, quiet. Uh, and as you ask how many people are in the streets, this is the kind of crowds and traffic that you're normally having around this area. Literally nobody. And this side, I'm pretty sure that we got quite a lot of Airbnbs and different kind of accommodations. And so staying in this area is great. Uh, let me see. I did having difficulty today with the super stickers. Uh, something got stuck probably. Felice ringraziamento, sì, my turkey is only 12 and a half pound, <laughs> but yummy, potatoes, gravy, corn, limas, wine, apple pie, <laughs> looks like a beautiful day in Venice. Oh, lucky you, we got uh, turkey, uh, potatoes, uh, we got uh, a sweet potato uh, pie, some wine and few friends. That's how everything is going to work it out today in my place. So definitely happy Thanksgiving to all of you for those that they are going to celebrate. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be fun. Great, great. Canareggio is best, is the best sestiere to stay in Venice. I definitely agree with you, Mare Nostrum. So if it's not Canareggio, it might be Castello. It, or even Dorso Duro, but this section is a bit more quiet. <laughs> Let me see. Ciao Anna, ciao Nina, uh, ciao, ciao Bob, ciao Bob. Is the rest of the city busy like when I bump into you or has it finally slowed down <laughs> into off season? No, let's say re this morning I was rooming around uh, Piazza San Marco and Rialto Bridge. It wasn't that busy. It, it's a kind of quiet and so we're handily back to normality before it was too much actually. Right now we, we, everybody's having a little rest uh, and uh, everybody's starting to go back to normality because uh, Bobo, when we ran into each other, the situation was totally out of control and um, now, now, now it's way much better. I hope that it's going to stay this way, but you can never tell, actually. Uh, it's supposed to be quiet uh, until the 20th of December, and then I believe that we're going to have a big chaos, starting with Christmas celebrations, and then uh, uh, New Year's Eve, and so on. I use the live peak of the Rialto to tell how busy is there. See, you're right, Canarejo got less tourists and more real Venetian inhabitants. No, you're totally right. I definitely agree with you. So the entire area of Canarejo, I mean, we got a lot of people that are coming opposite at the moment, but they're all mom and dads so that are going to pick up the kids in the elementary school or otherwise in the kindergarten. It depends, but uh, that's the kind of traffic that we're having. But this area is just beautiful, down to earth, quiet, relaxing. It's always uh, worth uh, to, to stay this side. At least uh, you don't have the crazy situations uh, that are not that nice uh, of the entire area of Rialto or St. Mark. I mean, we're all different. Some, they want practicity and they want to be in St. Mark Square. Some that wants to be out. It's like uh, for uh, if you travel to New York, uh, some that wants to be in Times Square, and some actually they're going to sleep in New Jersey rather than Queens uh, or whatever else. Water totally calm. No, it's super calm today. I mean, we got. Uh, a little bit of waves but because we got the boat that is coming over but it's totally 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 flat 
as you saw on the other side actually there are literally is a no wake zone <laughs> today it's super flat and we cannot complain much here we go we're slowly getting into the jewish quarter so from a totally different point of view we might have used this section a bunch of time actually but that's uh, where the jewish district is starting so we can go through this area and i take you back to the bridge of the guglia at the least you you we do a circle in this area but i definitely thank you didi grazie mille uh, hold on and we got the bridge made it no definitely if you're coming this side uh, oh you was here three weeks ago did you hold oh, no, good good to hear hope that you had a nice time such a beautiful light and birds uh, in the sky what a <laughs> uh let's see Igor, which restaurants do you prefer in Canareggio? Oh, I got a bunch actually. Let, let, let me take you there actually. That's so you will be enjoy a prosecco after your walk. <laughs> now the my idea into the parallel canal on the left hand side that you got three restaurants in a row that you got 40 ladroni, anice stellato, and you do have Orto dei Mori. In this embankment you got Da Rioba, you got Paradiso Perduto, and uh, you got... Um, and, yeah, those are probably my favorite ones. And then I really like, it's not a full Venetian restaurant, but it's more like a Mediterranean one, that I got uh, the Orient Experience, that is... Uh, not at this bridge, the next wooden bridge, right? And right there you got Orient Experience, and next door you got Cantine Aziende Agricole, that they got uh, amazing cicchetti, they got amazing um, appetizer, uh, tapas, and um, uh, the, the, an amazing selection of uh, uh, wines. Ciao, Blue Eyes, <laughs> ciao, tutti, buona giornata. Here we go, that we got definitely. The bridge that is definitely linking the 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 the, the embankment of the Ormesini. Uh, Ormesini it was the place where the Venetians they were coming to buy the silk, and uh, uh, he is definitely taking uh, the people into the Jewish quarter. So they recently um, uh, built restored the entire bridge and uh, think about uh, that this one it would have been one of the three four gates uh, that they were situated in the jewish ghetto that so everybody was able to go in and out of this area but right here we would have had a policeman that they were checking uh, that uh, nobody was going out especially during night time thank you kika vega grazie mille grazie 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 thank you to all of you for supporting our channel and uh, I'll show you another thing. Show you, uh, we are right in the Jewish district at this real moment, uh, and uh, we are right by the Ghetto Nuovo, the new ghetto, even if the name is supposed to be the old ghetto. And uh, look, Banco Rosso used to be one of the many pawn shops situated here in the Jewish quarter, that they would have been something like free. And Banco Rosso, Rosso is red. When you say I am in re my bank account is red, it seems that is coming directly from Venice. And so I'm broke, I'm red. And so it's a way that is uh, of saying that you don't have any kind of money, but it's coming directly from the Venetian pawn shop. The other idea is this one. Look, right in this area, we got uh, something like five synagogues. And 500 years ago, actually, we ended up having uh, uh, five synagogues that they were um, connected to the five different nationalities. We would have had a German, a Spanish, Italian, French, and Mediterranean area. And uh, 
here we go we got the five windows in a row that they are uh, uh, representing that they are showing off actually the compromise between the rabbi and the pope and so the pope wanted to have zero windows the rabbi 12 and they ended up with five with the five books of moses here we go same thing five windows in a row and this section right here is one of the areas where we got uh, the floors that are smaller than anywhere else around Venice and this one it was the way to fit uh, try to fit as many people as possible so here we go we got the kids that have just finished the kindergarten that they are coming out to play and slowly we're starting to face uh, the uh, Casa Israelitica di Riposo this one is uh, the nursing home of the people from Israel and uh, you have to know that especially during uh, uh, the, the second war uh, 200 Jews from the Jewish Venetian Jewish quarter ended up into the uh, concentration camps and something like six or seven they made it back just supported a walk around Venice I use PayPal thank you Igor and another great walk thank you Marek grazie 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 mille always enjoy hearing the story thank you my pleasure Mark but we got uh, the entire the other common question that we're normally having here is as you can see we got this little hood and uh, after the terrorist attack in 1982 uh, they decided to put uh, um, a kiosk uh, a little barrack that so everybody was able to control what was going on and the other idea is as you can see right there we got uh, the barbed wire and it's a way to protect uh, to, to remind us uh, that we were having uh, the holocaust uh, and the concentration camps uh, and uh, it, it's a way to commemorate uh, those days in a second i'm going to be able to show you some um, uh, stumbling stones Opa. oh look at look at look at this view unfortunately at the moment they are doing a lot of reconstruction works around this area and uh, if you are coming back to Venice you will see that they are going to be one after the others come on people it's Thanksgiving after <laughs> let me see let me try to overtake otherwise it's a problem muy bonito grazie 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 but you can see that this entire area is slightly different than all the others actually uh, it makes Venice a big massive multicultural area and uh, everybody was living in different areas like we would have had the district of uh, the Arabs we would have had the district uh, where uh, thank you Anne, grazie mille we would have had the district uh, where the persians they would have lived here we go that we got all the stumbling stones i believe that oh here we go that here used to live alba clerle born in 1879 arrested on the 5th of december 1943 deported into auschwitz and assassinated on the 26th of february 1944 so they were something like uh, brothers and sisters living here on the second third floor and uh, in those days actually it was happening that uh, uh, they chased them with uh, the boats of the slaughter house that we just saw it brought them to the uh, train station and put them by the truck number 18 into the train and they would have ended up into the different concentration camps here we go that's our little school that we got all the mums and dads uh, that they are waiting right there you got all the scooters that they are going to be thank you mark thank you thank you thank you but that that's how the kids uh, they are going home <laughs> oh look even at this section uh, the situation is going to be different again so in this section in this area we don't have many that they are telling you that is 
the Jewish district, but we got the Star of David that is right over there. As you can see, 1939, uh, sorry, 1939 and 1943, uh, they are pretty much mentioning that 200 Jews from Venice, 8,000 Jews from Italy, and uh, 6 millions of Jews from all over Europe, they ended up into concentration camps. But definitely, uh, we got one synagogue that is right here, that is uh, probably the most important. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Spalba Menga, grazie, grazie. <laughs> and uh, uh, this one is the one we use. And uh, we got another one that is exactly here. Thank you, folks, for helping. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. There we go. Let me slowly continue. I say that the entire area is not only uh, the Jewish community that is living here, but we got a little bit of everything. And look, um, this is uh, the only kosher bakery that is left in town. Unfortunately, is uh, getting smaller and smaller and smaller and uh, here we go that's so you can see but as venice is shrinking even the jewish uh, community is getting smaller and smaller and smaller unfortunately so it's a kind of a common problem for venice the little brass uh, plaque uh, commemorating former jewish residents are very moving absolutely right actually they are not only here in Venice, <laughs> they are uh, situated all over actually, and uh, they are pretty much uh, uh, all over Europe. And uh, they are really interesting, but it's a way that everybody can remember what is going on. Uh, this is different, <laughs> this one, uh, it makes me laugh all the time, and so... Uh, really see much but all over venice as i told you it's not related to the jewish community or whatever but what is really funny and interesting is that right here is written hey venetian folks don't swear because otherwise you're going to get arrested for something like six or seven days so it means that everybody was uh, um was uh, um swearing a lot and we were sending everybody to hell there are many uh, such stones in berlin see 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 you are right. they are um, they are not only in berlin of course so you got in warsaw in krakow uh, you got in praha in prague in Czech. Okay, you do have it in munich uh, there are in paris uh, but let's say all over home uh, i remember the one in uh, there are literally everywhere oh look where we are so you can get the full idea Ciao Johnny, buon pomeriggio, sì sì, tutto a posto, grazie mille, tutto perfetto. No, as you can see, look, the entire, situ the entire situation is completely different and uh, we started to walk this way and uh, we were at the real, 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 real end over there on the left hand side and uh, we cover up the entire uh, of the beaten track of Canareggio. Uh, some days films, I hope that everybody is going to make it uh, at some point uh, to come back actually. And uh, here we go, that we got uh, the Ponte delle Gluglie, the bridge of the Pinnacles, uh, and uh, we are really close to the train station at the moment. We're just uh, around the corner of San Jeremia. His walk finishes too quickly. <laughs> yeah. Even the battery on my phone is 
ending up too quickly probably sometimes here we go and so folks uh, i would definitely say thank you to all of you thank you for helping us uh, in uh, i love you venice it has been a pleasure to show you the beauties of venice i hope to see you soon in venice itself and uh, if you're going to see me around just stop me it will be nice to have a, a chat or a quick hello but, uh, unfortunately with bob we catch up uh, we basically we catch up i had more time with basil with bob had uh, no, no time at all unfortunately grazie mille folks uh, see you next time arrivederci alla prossima happy thanksgiving to for who is going to celebrate arrivederci ciao grazie mille